Hi, long time no see. Uh, today I'm gonna use a cheese cutter to cut the, to facet the servers of uh, some tea bowls. Uh, this is the uh, cheese cutter. Uh, I am adjusted about a little bit wider than one eighth of an inch. And I'm gonna use this to slice on the servers on the uh, cut. The uh, peel up, actually, like a peel up the skin of uh, uh, some people's. So again, I'm gonna throw off the hump. And since I'm going to uh, cut off the skin, so I will leave my wall a bit thicker. Okay, so I have already uh, done with my throwing. Now I'm ready to use this to slice. And uh, there's one other tip that uh, when you are using this, you want to bring up your uh, your ball, your pot, a little bit higher so when you're cutting it down, the handle doesn't hit the real head. Okay, so that's the, this is the one other way when you're using this, uh, you better to uh, throw it higher and uh, throw it up the hum. Mm. And when I'm cutting, I cut a little bit slanted. Okay. And after I cut it, I, uh, there's a little bit left over. I have to calculate that. Uh, I have to adjust it so that I will cut exactly the same width. So, like here, probably I will still need to cut about four times so that it will be even. cut a whole circle around and now well, after I cut it the, the uh, clay is still uh, stick on the surface just use a needle to uh, very carefully peel it off Okay, so uh, 
you could uh, run your finger through inside to adjust a little bit because sometimes when you cut it, the shape is not uh, uh, perfectly even. So you could uh, spin the wheel um, to do a little bit of uh, adjustment. And leave a little bit of a throw mark in inside the middle, it's nice too. Okay, so it's done. I'm ready to cut it up the hump and lift it up. And uh, one other trick too, uh, if you want to throw up the hump, usually you don't want to leave your button a little bit too wide, okay? Make it smaller, so so after you cut it, your two like this four, I, I call it scissor hand, can go underneath. Um, it will be easier for you to lift. If your button is so wide, you have to go and really squeeze it in, and that way you might uh, 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 deform your, your shape. So basically, uh, you, you're gonna trim your button, so it doesn't matter. So if you can make your uh, Put a bit smaller, it will be easier for you to do. So use the string and run it through. And it will be easy for you to lift it up and show you the uh, inside of the uh, throwing mark. Okay, ready to cut another one. Let me bring my wheel a bit closer.
Okay, here's another one. So, I will show you uh, tomorrow how I finish uh, trimming it. Um, after I cut it, uh, there is some residual on the surface of the, uh, the balls. And I don't do anything to it now until it gets dead hard and uh, I will run my finger through to smooth it. Okay, now I'm ready to trim the bottom of this teapot. The facet teapot. And uh, as I told you, I will try to uh, remove the uh, uh, residual clay here when it's ready, when it's dead hard. So now is now is the time to do it. Basically, I just use my finger to smooth the edges and the lines. So after I finish trimming, I will use a uh, little rock to smooth the edges too. I will show you later. By the way, a lot of people ask me what kind of tool I was using. Uh, this is the my uh, handmade tool from Hacksaw Blade. And uh, if you want to know how I make it, uh, just try to uh, search my video number seven. It's from the Hacksaw Blade, and uh, in there I show you how to uh, make this trimming tool, and it's very useful. Thank mm -hmm.
uh, from my previous video, I also uh, told you about when uh, you're throwing pieces of the hum to prevent from uh, getting S crack, you have to trim your bottom thin enough. And uh, my experience is you have to trim it about uh, less than maybe uh, maybe around one eighth of an inch, or I would say about two millimeters. Because throw up the hum, you don't uh, compress enough, so the bottom. If your button is very thick, you're gonna end up with a S crack. And uh, for how to measure what is the uh, right thickness of the button, uh, I don't remember which one is it. Uh, probably I would say the around 86 or uh, 87 I have uh, a video showing people how to measure the bottom of the thickness from the uh, chopsticks the little device I made it myself and uh, for experienced powder it just by uh, Tap in the button, and uh, you, you will be able to tell what's the right thickness. But uh, for beginners, I would suggest you to uh, watch my videos showing you how to measure the button, and uh, after practice, you memorize your sum. And later on, you don't need to use the a little measurement, and you could uh, you could tell your right thickness. Okay, the bottom has been trimmed and uh, usually this is my uh, little shiny rock from a rock store. Uh, get a shiny and smooth one. I'm using this to burnish the, the foot of my pot. because all the pieces you're going to serve some kind of uh, liquid or some kind of food and uh, you, don't want, you don't want it to uh, scratch the table so uh, you want to pay attention to the, uh, every detail And after that, I usually use my uh, stamp. And also, people ask me, "What is this?" I uh, could use a, a porcelain to carve your own logos. Um, I have this one. I have uh, actually I have two. Uh, I have people in Taiwan make it for me. This is from the Ax Home to uh, engrave to carve my my name on it. And usually put it on the foot because. Uh, one larger one and one smaller one. Smaller one is for the foot, so that I don't need to sign every single one. Just put it 
put my seal on the button. Okay, I would uh, use a sponge to, since this is porcelain, so uh, it's a lot more finer particle. So I use a sponge, it's okay. And then I told you that I usually use the rub to smooth the uh, the lines. So this is the uh, tea balls that I use a uh, cheese cutter to cut it, facet it, and then I finish trimming it up. Okay. Thanks for watching.